I want to welcome you to Canyon Creek Church, to those that are listening on our podcast or those that are viewing online. So good to speak with you today. You are getting us right now at the end of our Born for This series. This has been a message series that has gone through the things that we are truly born to do. What God has established since the beginning when we're asking the question, what is my life like? What should I be doing? Where am I at? We're reminded from scripture about all the things that God has actually created us to do. Things like we are born to be in relationship with him. We are born to love others. We are born to live a life of vision, born to live a life of integrity. Those are the things we've been talking through. And so I'd encourage you to continue back through this series, to look for the hope that is in your very life that you have right now. Excited to share today. This is what you were born to do, is to be part of a family. Something we were born for, something we are able to live in. And for many of us, and all of us, you don't really have a choice. Because you were born, you're in a family. And that's what we get to do together. So let's take a minute and pray and jump into this. Lord, we'd ask that you would just be speaking to our hearts and our lives right now. That you would remind us of your dream for the family since the beginning. And that we could walk in it in the way that you would orchestrate for us. We love you, Lord, and ask for you to speak. In your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, the family is a big thing. The reason, I mean, we're sharing this, we're actually uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Happy Thanksgiving to those that are checking this out. Uh, for family, friends that are gathered around, we're so excited that you are here. You're a part of this thing. And family is very present, especially at Thanksgiving and the holiday season. And I don't know, maybe some of you are kind of in the familyed out right now. You got a lot of it. It's all over the place. And so you're just like, okay, what was God's plan for this thing? It's fun. It's exciting. It's stressful. It's deep. And yet you're calling us to it. What's your plan? Well, the family is an amazing structure. It's something that God dreamed up since the beginning. He knew that we would all be placed into a family unit of sorts. And that really, it's been his dream that we would live it out. It has become the backbone of society globally. Anywhere you go, the family structure has a place, it has a focus, and it is prioritized above many things. And so that's what we're asking. Are we letting God's priorities be the priorities of our family? Let's take a look at what God's perspective of the family is. Well, one, it was established by God. Since the beginning, we back it up all the way, if you got your Bibles, back it up all the way to Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. It says, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The idea is that Someone will leave their parents, their, their family of origin, and create a new family of origin. That they will be united to someone else and they will be together as a new family. Not to replace the one they came from, but to add addition to what that was. And so the family is a continually adding component of our society. Something that God knew since the very beginning, this is what I want for humanity. I want them to be in relation with each other, to create a unit that's family, that can live life together and move forward in. That's what we've been asked to do. And so when we bring about children and relatives into the mix, if God set this thing up, he's got a plan for it. What does he want us to be pouring into this family that we've been given? What does God dream for us? to share with the kids. So, uh, a verse that we've been hanging on kind of throughout this whole Born for This series is found in Matthew 22, verse 36 through 40. Jesus is being asked, you know, what is the greatest commandment in the law? What is the most important thing? 
they say, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in all of the law? And Jesus replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. We've been talking about that is really what we are called to do. To love God with everything we have. And to love our neighbors. To love other people as ourself. Well, who do you think is the very closest neighbor that you have? That would be your family. Those are the ones immediately in your vicinity. And so I'd be encouraging you, what does your love for your family look like? If you're able to show compassion to those down the street, maybe to those on the other side of the world, and yet don't nurture an area of love within your own family against the neighbors that are the closest to you, you might be missing what we were commanded since the beginning. Because check this out. This section of scripture, uh, Jesus is referring to what's called the Shema. It's Deuteronomy 6. That's where it's originally found the hero Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. That's what he is quoting to them as this is the most important thing, which they totally agree with. But if you're looking at that verse in Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 6, 5 is that command. This is what Deuteronomy 6, 6 reads. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Impress them on your children. Bind these on your hearts and share them with your children. When you're at home, you should be talking about the goodness of God and how you want to love him with everything. When you wake up, when you go to bed, when, when you are with those very closest to you, the number one thing on your lips should be, I love God with everything I have, and I want my family to as well. That's the charge. That's the challenge. That's the call. And you know what? That's kind of hard to live up to sometimes. When we realize that's the greatest command, that's what really should be on our lips, on our mind, on our heart all the time. I was reminded of a little little game that my daughter was playing this last week. Um, it was really sweet. I, I got a couple kids, wonderful wife, a son, and a daughter. And my girl, Sophie, uh, says, you know, she's got this game. Everyone, She's giving two describing words to every person in our family. Just one of those dinner table kind of conversation things. And so she's got her two words she gives to mom. And they're, they're really sweet. They're adorable. Like both of them were like, I don't know, you're a, a wonder and a princess. Or beautiful and fantastic. I mean, her two words were really good. And then she talks about her brother. And she says, oh, and his also very respectful, very humorous, but yet very respectful to who he is. And it's like, Dad, the two words I'd have for you, I'd probably say coffee and emails. That's it. I was like, what? That Really? It's like, well, you love coffee, I think, more than anything. And... Every time I see you, you're, you know, you're checking emails, you're on your phone, you're texting, you're doing these things. And so that's kind of who I I'd, I'd describe you as. I got to say, that stung a little bit. That was kind of like, oh, okay, where are my priorities? What do my own kids see? Do they see this is a father who's pouring in his life and his love into his children and teaching them about following God? Or is he just taking care of business? That's the challenge. To move from the one to the other. It's a, there's a great, great quote out of the Purpose Driven Life. Talking about God's relational aspects with us. 
Because God is love, he treasures relationships. His very nature is relational, and he identifies himself in family terms. Father, Son, and Spirit. That God himself exists in a family-like, related encounter of himself and has modeled that for us. So we can know and understand him through our own lens of what family and relationships look like. When Jesus was on earth, that he was seen as, he was the very representation of God. That he was God in the flesh on earth as the perfect representative of him. You know what? In the same way, our kids are a representation of who we are. The good and the bad, I got to say. That when we, when our children are living their lives and making their encounters, there's a great level of saying, oh, must be the dad. <laughs> must be the mom, must be something of like, wow, that was an interesting response or attitude. And it's, it's because our children glean everything from us, the good, the bad, the ugly. They, they just, that's what they do. And guess what? It's okay. It's what God wants them to do. He created them to be nurtured, loved, impressed upon. What are we impressing upon them? Because they are going to be our representatives. And reflect who we are as people. And you could also be a reflection of your own parents. You're sitting here today saying, I know what my parents poured into my life. And this is what I'm reflecting out. Is that honoring them back? 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3 kind of gives the breakdown for what a elder, deacon, uh, leader in the church, what their life should look like. Kind of some basic qualifications. And in that is actually a section talking about that your children respect you and listen to you and obey you. Because if a person is unable to lead their family, how could they be trusted with leading God's church? My own credentials for even being here right now is to say, well, what do my kids look like? Are they reflecting Jesus? And the good news is they're not teenagers yet. So yes, they still are. And that's what I love. But as they grow, as they develop, my charge is that I will continue to help them reflect Jesus in their life because it's also a reflection of what I've been pouring and impressing into who they are. And so a challenge for you is to say, what am I putting in there? What am I building them to be? So we know that God established the family, that it was his dream, that he sees the use for it. He knows it will be the foundation of our very society and the way we interact and the laws we create all have to do with our family. But how do we do it his way? How do we live it his way? And it can't be done aside from the foundation that he has already established. Here's what it is. It's kind of a three-part foundation that he has set for us. The first piece is the word of God. The Bible is powerful. It tells you who you are. It tells you what God dreams for you, the things that he has promised, the things where he will come through, the very nature of why we're even talking today is found in scripture. And when the Bible literally is the foundation of your family, your family will dwell in security because they know they can always go back to something that is what God has spoken into our lives. Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. I want to have a firm, established family built on the rock. And that happens when I hear the word of God and put it into practice. When I say, hey, God, what do you want me to do? All right, this is what my family will do. We will follow 
We will let you lead us. We will let your word be the foundation of who we are. And we will act on it. We have a chance to stretch our reach around the world. In this kind of spirit of thanksgiving, we are actually bringing in uh, funds to bless kids that do not have food on the other side of the world. We've partnered with Convoy of Hope and their Feed One program. And for only $10, you can feed another child for a month. For what it costs to grab lunch in the Mill Creek Town Center, I can feed somebody for an entire month. And you know what? The family of God is way bigger than just the ones that live in my house. But he opens it up to say, this is the family. I want you to reach into those kids that don't have parents, that they maybe don't have someone to care for them, and you can be that to them. So if that's something you want to do, an opportunity, a way that you could give, uh, put up our our, our website here, canyoncreek.church slash give, and you can just give to that Feed One program. $10 takes care of a kid for a month. During this season, I think it would be great if we just say, okay, how many kids do I want to do? Or how many months do I want to make sure this kid is fed for? And you can just give on that right away. Thank you for your partnership in that. Because we want to not only hear the word, but actually be active on it and letting it transform. And I want my kids to see the example of someone who says, hey, you know what? There's someone who doesn't have food. Let's feed them. Let's be that compassion. The second piece of the foundation for the family that God has established is God's covenant. He has set a covenant with us. He was established all the way back with Abraham in this, Genesis 17, 7. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for all the generations to come. I will be your God, the God of your descendants after you. He has already set up a covenant saying, You and all of your kids, I got them. I will be your God. You can always know that your God is for you. That he is for your family. Your children for generations to come will be part of my family. Is what God is saying. And through Jesus, we are literally adopted into the family of God. By accepting Christ and bringing him into our life in that new covenant, he has made a way where we are literally become a child of God. Part of his family. Part of that covenant that says, I am here for you. I've got you. I love you. I love your family. You can rely on me. That is a foundation which we can build our family on, knowing that it is always there in God's presence. The third aspect of the foundation is an intimate relationship. Really, when you have a relationship, like personally, you have a relationship with Jesus, your family will witness that. It will set the example that when I'm living my day and I'm being faithful to Jesus and I'm relying on his his promises and I'm being obedient to what he leads me to do, that my kids see that. And you know what? They know that God is real. They know that God has transformed my life. They know that God has power to do amazing things in his people. And as a family, we can literally encourage each other in that to set the example for what that should look like. It kind of reminds me of, I, I, I spent many years as a youth pastor, and uh, a highlight is winter camp. We got that coming up soon, so if you haven't registered for winter camp, do that. It's going to be an amazing experience, because what happens in that type of setting is you hear the stories where people, these, you know, teenagers have set aside time to go out and just seek God, and the stories that come back, almost every time it says that I have now made my faith my own. I met Jesus that weekend, and I am no longer living off my parents' faith anymore. When I hear that story, I'm completely reminded of, you know what? Both of those things are good. 
I love the fact that they have made a decision to follow Jesus and they now know I personally have a relationship with Jesus and I'm not hanging on my parents' faith anymore. Well, praise the Lord that they had their parents' faith to hang on to their whole life. Because when they made that decision to follow Jesus, it was in complete response to what they've seen modeled in their family. They knew what they were asking for. They knew what they were jumping into and were able to personalize it and make it their own. Listen to this. 1 John 1, 3. We proclaim to you that what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That that's what was set up is saying, I want to share my faith in a real way with my family so that they can then look back and say, hey, I've experienced this too because this is a unifying thing. Uh, a survey was done of actually a, a major scale survey. Uh, globally, 30 different countries were included focusing on family dynamics. And they narrowed it down to the six most important things to a strong family. First thing, a strong family has a strong commitment to each other. That they are committed. That they will prioritize their family above all the different things that come their way. That they will say, my family is first to me. I am committed to them. I will be faithful to them. They are mine and I am theirs. The next piece, that they spend enjoyable time together. It is very important that you, as in your family, you're spending time with each other. As a church family, that we are spending time with one another. Because we are family and we want to be doing life together. That's why we're a part of groups. That's why we do different things around here. Because we want for your family experience to be that, a family experience. A survey was done of 1,500 kids. And they asked them, what makes for a happy family? And their response, uh, there were a few of them that said, uh, new car, bigger house, trip to Disneyland. But the, the mass majority said, our family is the very happiest when we're spending time together when we are active, when we have set other things aside and gather as a family, that's when we're the strongest and the happiest. Another aspect of a strong family is good communication. When you're able to talk to one another, when you can ex freely express your opinions and your children can and your parents can and you can just really communicate with each other not the how was work good how was school good okay good night see you in the morning but an actual i i want to hear how are you doing in life and i want to share how i'm doing in life and we want to do this together the family is the setting to have the strongest communication so work on that the other uh, another aspect here of a strong family is that they have appreciation and affection for each other. I got to tell you, your affections are best reserved for your family. They should get the lion's share of the affection that you give in your life should go to your family. That they get your best, they get your most hugs, your most generosity, that you are affectionate towards them and you show that you appreciate who they are who God created them to be, and that will truly strengthen your family if that's what you're seeking first. Ability to solve problems and react in crisis. It's another aspect. Um, problems come our way. James reminds us that we are all, we experience trials and troubles and issues that come into our life, and it's because they show up to test our faith. All of these come our way so that we then lean into that family, that intimate relationship we have with God and say, I, I need to work with you on this. Strengthen me on this. I need you to come through for me on this. 
And the problem draws us closer to the solution to the problem. To the one who can actually give help and give hope. When a problem hits your family, and, it, and I mean it happens. I've had some major issues and different things that have come at the family. I mean, a lot of events happen. I mean, just this last week, we had like birthdays, Thanksgiving, and a funeral. All within this last week in my family. And I mean, that's like there's a lot that goes on with that. And we're able to then say, you know what? We're going to let those events strengthen us, draw us closer together. And the last aspect on here that was done, and I mean, again, keep in mind, this is a global survey thing, but what they have on here as the sixth aspect of a strong family, and what I would say is probably, it is the most important aspect of a strong family, is that they have a shared spiritual life. That your faith is part of your family's faith that you actually share with each other, that you are vulnerable in your walk with Jesus and encourage your children, your spouse, your parents to grow in that with you. That as you're growing together as a family, that that is going to make a huge difference to the way that you guys perceive the world And the way that you are then able to interact and bless other people. Because you've already started at the home and moved out from there. For those of you that are feeling like, man, I I don't I don't have a great family situation. And I realize that that can be true. And you're sitting here saying, Man, I wish my family wasn't so broken, wasn't so hurting. You say family and it just stings. And I want to encourage you right now that God knows. And that's why he's given you the family of God, which in many ways can be stronger and deeper and more loving than the family of origin that you're coming to this situation with. His love over overshadows the hurt that you have and will fill in in those areas. Because that's why we have this. We have the church. We are the family of God that's able to be united together, walk together in life. I'll be praying for your family, that they would be strong, that they would be placed on the foundation that God has set before them, that they would trust in his word, in his covenant, in the relationship that they have with him, and be strengthened together. Really, church, you were born to be part of the family of God, and you We're born to be in a family and to make that family your priority.